How are you doing, Ken? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Just working away, studying and working at the moment. So, um, yeah, I'm studying some interesting things at this precise time. But yeah, yeah, really good. How are you doing? I'm great, brother. Happy God bless 2021 to you and all our listeners. That are yeah, in, likewise. Brother. Likewise. Welcome to Black Car Sneakers Land, my man. I really appreciate you bringing me on, man, because what you're doing is absolutely amazing. And you're consistent as well. You're Thank absolutely you. consistent as well, and that's what I love, man. So, yeah, as I said, I appreciate you. Thank you for inviting me. And, yeah, man, we can chop it up. <laughs> Let's chop it up, brother. Let's chop it up. Let's chop it up. Yeah. So, please, tell the world, tell everyone, who is Mr. Kevin Bennett? Who are you, brother? What do you do? How did you arrive at your journey of being a motivational coach, a mind coach, a winner, and a successful individual in your own right. Tell us about who you are. Um, well, my actual job role is that I'm a mental and emotional strategist. Um, so what I do, I work with companies, governments, government bodies, organizations. And so they will call me in for multiple different reasons. Anything to do with the mind and emotions, that's what I specialize in. Yeah, so sure. I wouldn't say that I'm, I wouldn't say I motivate per se, to be honest, because there's some things I tell people and it doesn't motivate them because they have to hear the truth. Um, and so it's more about strategies I look at, you know, psychological behavior and strategies. So I've had governments call me in to look at the populace and to work out how to build a relationship between government bodies and the population in certain yeah, other but, places, certain countries like Bulgaria, for example. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I also work with companies so from even from a business perspective sometimes they may say how can we market this product what is the mindset of our consumers and how do we build a relationship with it so i break down the science of what they are going through emotionally and we also look at the marketing campaign of how we can help that help the relationship between the product service and the consumer um, away from that i work with my main interest is working with people that's going through mental and emotional trauma uh, so people are going through doubt, worry, pessimism, anger, rage, the nine types of depression. They, I focus on those areas. Did you say nine mm -hmm. types of depression? Yes. Wow. Yes. You're going to get into that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so, so there's, there's many different things I focus on in that sense as well. Yeah. Right. Wonderful. Great stuff. Great stuff, brother. I mean, me and you, we have a similar background in terms of growing up in South London, you know, yeah, coming yeah, from where we're coming from, <laughs> you know, and, and we've had to learn, you know, and, and in a lot of ways be self-taught into becoming yeah. the man that we are today, becoming the men that we are today. So, and I always, it's such a good point because I always say to people, your traumas are part of your journey of education. Yes. And so when you're, when, when your traumas kick in, they are the motivations, or they should be the motivations, in order for you to navigate to the next stage in your life. Yes, sir. And so many people believe that a trauma is what, it should, it is what hinders them, and they make that trauma become their journey in yes, a sir. way that it becomes more negative than a positive thing. And so for me, I always look at the simple fact that your traumas should be the, the beginning of your journey and wow. not the ending of your belief system. That's brilliant. That's brilliant, brother. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Your trauma should be the beginning and not the oh, end of your belief system. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Should be, the, brilliant. should be the beginning of your journey. The beginning of your if journey. You, if you think about it, I'll give you a prime example, right? You know, God forbid, there are some people out there that um, their family members died of cancer. And all of a sudden, they become an advocate to, to deal with cancer. Yeah. Or you have some people that's been abused as a child, and all of a sudden, they become a social worker in their later years, you know, because their trauma became the beginning of their journey. That's very profound that you say that, because a lot of people, for example, may get involved in youth work, because maybe they feel in their lives that they didn't get that mentoring or that tutelage that they would have so much desired when they were younger. So they want to give it to other young people. Exactly. Youth, youth work. So that trauma of not having maybe a father around or having a broken home, uh, you know, single parent family, all that kind of stuff. They feel, well, I, they become more, they have developed an empathy 
to society and then enter into things like youth work, mentoring, counseling, and so forth. Well, 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 this is the, this is the reason why in society overall, you have some people who are just not interested in money that the way that other people are interested in money. Yes, sir. You know, because their journey is more important based upon their trauma that they was experiencing. So where some people are really more capitalist in their mindset, they want to make money, want to make money. There are other people that go into a profession knowing that that profession is never going to make them a millionaire or is going to give them a lifestyle that they ideally want. But because it's richer than themselves. Exactly, exactly. So the relationship right. with their self is a lot richer than maybe the man that is a direct capitalist to what he desires and requires in life when it comes to riches. And so this is how it breaks up. We kind of lost you there sound-wise, brother. Sorry. I don't know what's going on with the gram right now. Sorry, one second. Sorry. Sorry, no problem. Give me one second. Someone's trying to call my phone. I've got yeah, yeah, that happens, so isn't it? Sorry. It happens, bruv. It's no problem. I understand. People, we are joined by Kevin Bennett. Kevin Bennett, live on our Black House Speakers Lounge. Brother, go ahead, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, so as I was saying, so when I work with different types of people, like, for example, I work with a social worker, and the social worker is going through trauma. Now, there are when I, when I put systems together, mm. I look at industries. So I say, yeah. okay, what industries have the highest depression rate? Wow. Okay? Because industries carry frequencies. Come on. And what I love that. Is industry carries frequencies, and we're going to get into the acting uh, film industry in a bit. But yeah, carry on. Sorry. Yes, yes. So industries carry frequencies, and careers also carry frequencies as well. So, for example, did you know that surgeons have the highest suicide rate? I didn't know that. Surgeons Ooh. have the highest suicide rate. So they're making hundreds of thousands yearly, but yet they have the highest suicide rate. Dentists also have a high depression stroke suicide rate. Yeah. Really? So industries really? carry frequencies. Yes. It's a very serious thing. And so you'd be surprised. Wow. You'd be, because here, here's the thing. It's not just about what you do, it's the frequency of what you do. So imagine, for example, as a surgeon, right? All you're doing oh. every day is fixing problems. And so the, the electron frequency of that problem, he carries it in, he takes it in every single day. He brings it around with him. So if someone dies, who do you think it falls on? You know? Oh, um, okay, the surgeon and the doctor. Exactly. The, 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 Right. Yeah, especially like anais anaismatist, for example, anaismatist has a high suicide rate. So when anaismatist is putting someone under into an, uh, an anesthetic mode, if that person dies, they feel guilty for it. They carry it around. So wow. there's so much going on within um, industries as well. So just because you, you're in a high paid industry, for example, it doesn't necessarily mean that that industry doesn't carry a, a, a negative frequency. And so you'd be surprised the type of people that would call me in to help them. Um, I had a contract with Croydon Council. And even when I was working with Croydon Council, 97% of the social workers were going in, was in deep, dark um, depression. And they just couldn't fight mm. another day. They were, they were in a very dark place. So once again, it's like we have to be so um, extremely sympathetic to what people are going through from an industry perspective. You know, um, nurses at the moment, I'm, I'm actually getting ready to do a podcast called Kevin Bennett's Trauma, hence the KBT, Kevin Bennett's okay. Trauma. Yeah. Um, and the podcast is looking at industries that are going through the, the depressions and um, suicide rates and whatever. So, the, so my first one's going to be of a nurse. And this nurse, for example... Um, she was telling me yesterday, she was giving me a, we was having a conversation, having a debrief about how we're going to go forward with it. And this nurse spoke about a multitude of things. She spoke about the simple fact that she's had COVID and mm -hmm. that broke her. And then when she goes to work, um, patients are abusing her. Um, in the media, they're getting abused as well, that the doctors and the hospitals are not doing enough or they're empty and so on and so forth. And then she's got to deal with deaths. And long hours. So at the moment, this particular woman, she's pretty much on the verge of suicidal. And it's not just her. She said her colleagues as well, they're breaking down. They're falling apart. 
by the dozens in, inside hospitals. So nurses as well, they're, they're in a dark place at this precise time. So yeah. industries have frequencies. Okay. Acting frequencies. I'm going to come back to the NHS and the doctors and the nurses and the surgeons. What kind of frequency does the acting industry carry? <laughs> This is interesting. No, the, the, the actors of the acting industry, writers, actors, the, the arts in general, they're about number 10 in the depression list. Woo! Yeah, they're about number 10 in the depression list. Um, inconsistent work, um, self doubt, um, being rejected all the time, all of those things. So if you think about most of, like, for example, what's his name? Uh, Robin, Robin, Robin Williams? Robin Williams, yeah. 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 Committed yes, suicide, sir. right? And the majority of these actors and comedians, the arts in general, they have, they're very prone to suicide, but they're oh definitely in the realm of depression. So the acting industry, um, stroke the arts industry, they are in the top, they're, they're about 10, 11 when it comes to okay. industries that, yeah. that um, have um, high depression, stroke suicide yeah. rates. What's the solution, Kevin Bennett, to depression? What is depression and what's the solution? Because a lot of people talk the problems, but what I love about you, Kevin, you offer solutions. 2021 is about solutions. Problems will always come, but solutions, man. What's the solution to this then, bro? Okay, so there's no one type of solution, but I'll give, yeah. you, some, um, I'll give you some solution that is guaranteed it works. I've been working on it from 2009, and I'm not saying all of the findings are mine, uh, some findings are mine, probably a limited amount, but other findings are proven from um, psychologists and, and other areas of, of the, the um, anatomy of the brain and the body as well. Um, so I'll give you some solution. First and foremost, let's find out how we get there. Come so on. we've got to recognize when we get there, first and foremost. So we have to go back, go back a million years or so, right? And we were in the place of fight or flight. Yeah. Now, fight and flight is about um, once upon a time, we may have had a tiger or a saber tooth tiger or some, whatever it may be would come to attack us. So yeah. in that moment, in that moment, um, we will go into fight or flight mode. And what that means is when you go into fight or flight mode for a moment, you would have high stress. And so have you ever been stressed, so stressed before in a situation where you, you're running fast and you can never run? You would jump over a wall. You would never could jump over at a normal time if someone was running after you or something was happening to you, right? So when you go into fight mode, your adrenaline rush goes up, your energy goes up, everything goes up, your body goes into like a panic mode. That's right. But, but this panic mode is only designed short term. It's only designed to be a matter of hours maximum. If you're hunting your food and you're in that stress mode, the stress mode is only designed for a number of hours. Right. But nowadays, our stress is going on for weeks. And yeah. then the weeks go into months. Lockdown. Exactly, right? But in general, our jobs, are all of that is high stress. But we're not designed to, to have consistent stress. And oh, what happens yeah. when, when you have consistent stress, you start to build inflammation on the brain. So a lot mm. of people don't know you start to build inflammation on the brain. When you start to build inflammation on the brain, then it causes depression. That's how depression starts to kick in, right? And so when you start to have bouts of depression, it lasts a lot longer. It starts to stick. Now, mm -hmm. what happens, right? So, so to, let's break down the solution in stages. Yes, sir. The gateway, the gateway uh, emotion to depression is frustration. That's the gateway. So when you're starting to feel frustrated, that is when you have to start nipping it in the bud. If you don't nip it in the bud, it's one of the frequencies, but it's the one of the main frequencies that can lead you to depression is frustration. Too much frustration breeds stress, Jeez. anger, doubt, worry, jealousy, sadness, anxiety, fear, grief, feeling ashamed. Mm -mm. You lead to depression. So you go up and down the scales. There's 25 scales of emotions, right? Wow. And with the 25 different scales of, of emotions, we're, we're, we're like a pendulum. We go up and down the scales, up and yes, down sir. the scale. Yes, now, sir. when they talk about one of, um, one of the depressions, one of the depressions, for example, is bipolar. 
as a depression. Now, yeah. bipolar is when people go from bouts of happiness straight to bouts of sadness and feeling down. That's not natural. What we have to do is go through the journey of emotions. We have mm -hmm. to go through the journey of, okay, so I'll give a prime example. Let's say you're feeling depressed, okay? What is better than depression? Well, you can't jump straight to happiness because that's not realistic. So sometimes when we're giving people advice and we say, yeah. just think positive. Like that's the person right. wants to struggle with you because in that moment, they can't even picture what positive looks like, what it means. Yes. So what is better than depression, for example? Anger. Why? Because depression is designed to debilitate you. You're in Woo! your bed. You can't move. You can't focus. You can't think. I've got a quick thing for you, brother. Is it yeah. possible that people can be depressed and not know that they're depressed? Well, they may not can articulate it, but they know something's wrong. You feel it in your body. You feel it in your gut. You feel it within yourself. You feel heavy. You feel clouded. You feel um, dis um, disorientated. You feel disconnected. Right. You feel you feel um, like you are not a part of the world. So yeah. when you're going through depression, you may not can articulate it as depression, but you know something is fundamentally wrong with you. That's big, bingo, bingo. So. With depression, I've even said stuff, and I remember listening to a, an address on depression, and you may disagree with this, but I have found some truth in it. And it said that depression can be a choice. A lot of people, I put that on my status a few years ago, and people were like, no, you can't say that, you don't understand, blah, blah, blah. And this is my own experience of it, is that you can get that depression creeping up on you, especially now in the winter time. We, we've spoken about this on Black Car Speakers Lounge, where there's less sunlight, you know, that means there's less opportunity to get vitamin D, Christmas, especially now lockdown, Christmas for a lot of people was very unhappy. Some people can't even wait to get back to work. Some people can't wait. Obviously, we all can't wait to get back to some kind of normality, but Christmas just gone in 2020, December, people are, are, were alone because of tier, tier four or five and COVID and couldn't see, their, didn't see their family. A lot of people, suicide, I've read on the National Statistic Database is very high during Christmas and Valentine's Day. You know, Christmas yeah. and Valentine's Day because all of those, those two uh, festive seasons or uh, uh, moments of uh, times of celebration during the day, yeah, represent love and giving and sharing. And there are still a lot of people who are not in a family or in a loving relationship. So, yeah. I so, can I, ask you a question? Can, I, can I ask you a question? I'm sorry, yeah. not ask you. I'll, I'll respond to your question. Yeah, um, dep depression in some cases is a choice, but in many other cases is not a choice. Right. And, and I'll tell you the reason why. Um, for example, you have women who would have postpartum um, depression. Again? Postpartum. Right. So, so postpartum depression is like after they have a baby and, and it becomes hormonal. So the depression is yeah, hormonal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Postnatal so, depression. I think. So yes, yeah. yeah. yes, yes, exactly. So for example, that is more hormonal than a choice. It's actually the change of the body and it's hormones that go to the brain, which, which then cause the brain to have inflammation that is a depression. So for example, that's not a choice in that sense. Yes, sir. Um, then you have um, sad, because you said sad and it actually triggered the, the memory of sad. Sad is also a depression as well. Seasonal, well, seasonal affective disorder? Yes, yes. Single. So that, yeah. that's a type of depression also. And so once again, that can creep up just based upon the weather not being correct for some people. Yeah. And so there's, there's different ways. But here's something, this is going to blow your mind and this is very controversial at the moment. So here's Come one on. I'm going to throw at you. Um, so at the moment, I'm studying about why homosexual people are homosexual. Go and, ahead. Um, Peach. And, yeah, and it's very interesting. And it's funny, when I spoke to about four homosexual people, I asked them, I said, do you know how you got to that place? And none of them know. And I found it strange that, and I, and I asked them certain questions, which was linked to the fact that they are frustrated with what, what, what they are and how they see themselves. That's and so, profound. yeah, very interesting. So even when you look at, for example, um, a lot of um, homosexuals, they, they have high suicide rates as well. That's why the trans they, community does as well. That's and the trans community as well, they have high suicide rates. Let me explain why. I'm going to break down the science of it. Is okay? that due to transphobia and homophobia? No, no, no. Uh, well, not exactly. Well, 
everything's a contribution, but okay. it's not the core. It's not the core. So let me break down the core of where a lot of this comes from. Yes, and this is, gonna, this is going to be very interesting, okay? Go ahead. So when you are um, a fetus, okay, your organs are formed as a fetus, right? So, you know, you do your ultrasound and it says, oh my gosh, you can see a little dinkle there, it's a boy. Congratulations, you're having a boy, okay? Right. Family happy, right? So yes, the sir. first sign, the first sign of, of um, the fact that you're a man, for example, is the fact, or a boy, or a male, is the fact that the, um, you can see it within the fetus, right? right? Now, the fetus, what the fetus has to do, when the baby's born, the fetus has something called gonads. Yeah? yeah no, gonads. 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 Right, gonads. Mm -hmm. The gonads send testosterone, testosterone, sorry, to the brain to tell the brain that, that the body is a male. Why? Okay, so let's go a little back a bit. So you know when people got this argument of, well, genders are formulated, ideas or ideals formulated by society. I disagree with that because I tell people, no, it's not. It's there from when you're born. What we right. choose to be after we're born is down to us. Right. So yeah, I'm going to break that down to you. Go so ahead. you're oh, brilliant. So what mm. happens? The gonads send testosterone to the brain to tell the brain I am a male. Now here's what happens. Let's go back to pregnancy. In pregnancy, there are certain things that, you know you look on certain creams and you look on certain things and it will say, do not take this when you're pregnant. Do not take um, steroids when you're pregnant, for example. Wow. Because what happens, the testosterone, um, the steroids and other things that you may take in pregnancy can affect the testosterone from going to the brain. So it can either not go to the brain or go to the brain at the wrong time. Okay. And so, so if it doesn't get to the brain, the brain still thinks that it's a, uh, it's a female because we're what you call bi um, bipartial when, when, we're, when we're born. So you don't know as a baby that you're a male or a female until the testosterone tells you what you are. But what happens if the testosterone do not, doesn't tell you what you are um, psycho, uh, to, um, when it goes to the brain? So this is why you will hear a lot of people that are gay or whatever it may be, what they would say, if you talk to them, they'll say they'll feel like they're two different people. Their brain will tell them that they are female because the testosterone either didn't get to the brain or it got to the brain at the wrong way or there was a disconnect because steroids and other things were uh, taken in pregnancy. Wow. So what happens, the brain uh, will feel like it's a, a female, but the organs would show that it's a male. Wow. So this is the reason why you would have a, a lot of these people, trans community, gay people, whatever, would turn around and say, I feel like I'm two different people split in two. Because the brain and the body is, has a disconnect because of testosterone, there was something wrong it's with boring. it. Is that yeah. gender dysphoria? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. if somebody was to argue that, oh, Kevin, what you just said there is transphobic, homophobic. No, it's a scientific fact. It's not me. It's a scientific yeah. fact. So I would say go to the science community and research it. It's actually a scientific fact. So does ever, So is there gonads? Yes, there are. What does the gonads do? So if, if someone wants to look for themselves, Research what the reproductive system does and what the gonad does, what the job yes. of the gonads will do, and what, what the uh, and what the gonads, what information the gonads will send to the brain. Research wow. it for yourself. Ignore me. Pretend I don't exist, and research it for yourself, and you'll find out. That's very deep. I'm gonna look into that. Um, so, in terms of so going, back to yeah, so going back to depression, for example, the ways to deal with depression first and foremost, as I said, so oh, you're, you're we saying, kind, of, we sorry, kind of moved off a bit, yeah. So where we moved off a bit is like, is depression in some cases, um, uh, is it a choice in some cases? Not in some cases, but you can turn it around, but it's not a choice in some cases. In other cases, it is a choice. So from an emotional perspective, yes, and a frequency perspective, you can change the frequency once you're consciously aware that you are going into that frequency. So you may get a phone call and one person says, guess what? Good news. And you're happy. Another person calls you up and said, 
guess who just died? So oh, you can't right. control those moments of emotions. But yes, what sir. you can control is what happens after those moments of um, of, of information, bad information, good information, and so on and so forth. So you need to have what I call a toolbox. Come on, and a tool come on, get, people. Let me just pause you there right, real quick, yeah. brother. I love what you're doing. You're on an absolute trailblazing roll, brother. I can see the fire just lighting up behind <laughs> you, bro. I love it. I just want to let people know who's just joining. Happy, happy, very happy. Blessed New Year to each and every one of you who are listening and tuning into Black Lives Matter Islam. You are joined in with our very special guest, Mr. Kevin Bennett. He's dropping some science, actual Thank fact you. and wisdom. He is a motivational speaker, a life coach, CEO, business owner, entrepreneur. He's very successful. So he's not just talking. He's lived it. He's studied it. He's certified. He's certy. As Mandem Serro, he's certy. So, Thank you. Thank Kevin, you. continue working, everybody. Go. Go ahead, brother. Thank you very much. So, with that said, so what happens now? So, how do we deal with depression? Well, first and foremost, we need to have what you call a toolbox. But it's a multitude of things. Um, a toolbox, what I call a toolbox, and I, I created my own toolbox. I believe, okay, let's say you've got a car, right? And your car has five things wrong with it. I don't know. The engine's clinking, the wheel's shaky, the yeah. end, wow, whatever. Right? Okay, right? So you bring your car to the garage, you expect that garage man or woman to have all the tools to fix the car. To run a diagnostic on the car. To find the right, but, but also to fix the car. Do you know, yes, do you have sir. the right scanners? Do you have the jacks? Do you have the machines? Do you have all of that to fix the car? Come on. Now, if they didn't have all of those things, you wouldn't leave your car with them. Come on. But as human beings, we don't have enough tools to fix ourselves. Right. Woo! Yeah. So we need tools just like a garage man needs tools to fix the car. We need but a lot tools of people think they don't need fixing, Kevin. A lot of people say, oh, I don't need fixing. I'm all right. I've got a good job. But you've debunked that by saying, look, good jobs doesn't necessarily stable mental health. You've got surgeons no. on 100K, six-figure salary who are offering themselves, you know. Exactly. Men, men in, in, in society, men have the highest suicide rate. You know, I, yeah. I, I want to even go into the black community as well. Like, do is the suicide rate high amongst black males? It's Which really bad. As black males, we need to know what's yeah, going on. Really, carry on, brother. Yeah. So, so what happens now? Um, so we need to have t tools in order for us to deal with. See, it's not just depression alone because depression, depression is right to the end of the scale, and I think that's one of the reasons where we go wrong. We need to have tools to deal with frustration. We need to have tools to deal with feeling guilty. We need to have tools to deal with feeling ashamed. We need to have tools to deal with insecurity. We need to have tools to deal with anxiety. We need to have tools to deal with fear, loneliness, sadness, worry, jealousy, anger, this being disheartened, doubt, disappointment. We need tools for all of them. Now, when we're, by the time we get to depression, it's because we didn't deal with the other emotions and the other wow. frequencies beforehand. Depression is because we didn't deal with the rest. The pressure's right at the end of the scale. It was shown in Auschwitz and it was shown in the Vietnam War that people were just going to sleep and not waking up, dying of depression. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So people die of depression. And people, when you get depression, as I said, depression is... Um, 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 it, it, affects, it affects the brain, right? Yes, and so when, you're, when, you're, when your brain is affected... Carry on, brother. I'm just gonna make sure. carry on, carry on, brother. Yeah, yeah, carry sure, on. Sure, no problem. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So when the brain is affected, it affects the rest of the body. This is where you got the term disease. It's a disease, right? So you have inflammation that builds up on the brain because the brain has so much pressure that it turns into a disease. It turns into a depression, and then the body turns from alkaline into acid. So it starts to affect the cells. It starts to affect you in general. And so before we get to that place, by the time we get to that place, we're fixing a lot of problems there, but we don't need to get there if we can deal with the other emotions first. We don't need to get there if we can deal with anger. We don't need to get there if we can deal with worry. Now, what is worry? Worry is an extreme imagination. Worry doesn't exist. It's our imagination Where, that deals with that. that is worry don't exist. Too. Go ahead. Right. I love it. I love it, bro. Carry on. Get in. I'm yeah. not even interrupting you. Go ahead. <laughs> I love it. So, I love it. Worry so does not exist, people. Get your questions ready for Mr. Kevin Bennett. 
Put them out there, please, please, please. Carry on, yeah. So worry doesn't exist. If you think about worry, just dissect it in your mind, right? Yeah. Worry is only imagination. You're anticipating the worst case scenario. Wow. That's what worry is. So and we're worry... in a nation full of warriors, not warriors. Not warriors, <laughs> but warriors. Worry, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Warriors. How do we get rid of it? But, bro, so you said about toolbox. Would you, I mean, I've known people who, I've even, I'm, I'll be transparent here, but I've been in a relationship with a lady, very beautiful lady, um, it was a long-term relationship, but she, she had, she was taking, it was on and off, I should say, it was on and off. Mm -hmm. um, she takes anxiety tablets, and I thought it was just her, but I found that many women are on anxiety or on medication, bro. Yeah. So is that a toolbox? I personally don't believe, but it's not about me and my opinion and my thoughts. But would you say take an antidepressants, uh, smoking even, uh, Mersh grade, weed, Rastaman weed, um, just doing so? Would you say taking anything medicinal is a tool to overcome anxiety and depression? Do you know, do you know um, here's the thing. I'm not qualified to talk to about this part here because we're talking about medicine, we're talking about medicine here. Yeah. And, and I would never want to give a professional view in an area that I'm not qualified in. Now, I've really? researched certain things and certain things make sense to me. So I can tell you for entertainment purposes only yes, what sir. my beliefs are. Yes, I believe that when your um, depression is hormonal or it has something to do with um, a frequency, some anxiety, uh, some um, antidepressants should be taken for a short period of time until you get the other side of you sorted out. But it's not designed, it shouldn't be designed to be long term. Right. So I'm not a big fan of it because you can use certain natural things that I are know. not, um, are, that are not chemicals like St. John's Wort. And there are certain things that you can use that are natural that can deal with it. Um, I'm being very careful how I'm talking here because I said I don't want to lead anyone. Because I'm, it's a very, I'm, I'm not, I'm not qualified to talk about this for educational purposes only. Yeah, so um, I'm not a fan of antidepressants, um, but I do know that antidepressants are needed in some cases, not all. I think they offer them out too easy and um, without enough education and without enough. Um, of an alternative solution. See, here's the thing, right? If you go to a drug dealer, he's not going to sell you daffodils. So you've got to understand, when you go to a doctor, his job is to give you what doctors are told to sell. Yes. Yeah? So we've got to understand, you go to a drug dealer, and you're going to get drugs. You go to a florist, you're going to get flowers. You're not going to go to a florist and get drugs. So you've got to understand, when you go to a doctor, the only thing that a hammer can do is look at nails. Yeah, right. well, I do believe that there are I cases... I love that thing. Hammers only see nails. I love it. Yeah, right. So, so, so there are cases when your body, from a frequency perspective or from a hormonal perspective, is out of line. That's when sometimes the chemicals are needed. But I don't believe it's needed for most types of depression. I believe that that can be dealt with another way. What is the other ways and the tools and the natural ways the holistic ways that we can take in order to avoid depression and overcome worry and anxiety, sir. Okay, so there are some things that's going to sound very simplistic, all right? Mm. Um, it's funny, I spoke to a man, he's a billionaire, about five months ago. He he said, yeah. Right, so, <laughs> man, just he, he right said, I spoke to a billionaire. <laughs> no, no, but I tell you the reason why I say that. He said, do you know the difference between rich people and poor people when it comes to ideas? And I said, what? He said, simplicity. He said, rich people look at things from a simplistic perspective um, when it comes to business and lifestyle, and poor people complicate things. And that's wow. what tied, um, and that's what, that's say what that again, say that again, say that again, say that again. Yeah. So, so what this man said to me is the difference between rich people and poor people is rich people see things from a simplistic perspective. So if you think about simple businesses that are absolutely killing it, they're very simple ideas. And poor people <laughs> tend to look at oh. things from a perspective. Yeah. Whoa. So, 
so going back to my point, what what I, what I was uh, what I was you know talking about is what we there, there are ways to deal with complicated situations in a simple way. So some of the things I'm going to introduce to you is very simple, but it works. Okay, and I'm going to say something controversial after I say this first part here. Um, so brisk walking yeah. deals with anxiety. Um, and depression on a major scale. It's actually one of the high ones to deal with it. True. So it's not just normal walking, but it's brisk walking. With the dog. Now, brisk the walking, early walks. Yeah, so brisk walking, for example, is something like 100 steps a minute, something like that. So that's what's yeah. classed as brisk walking. Roughly about 100 steps a minute. Now, when you do 100 steps a minute, your goal is to keep your posture up. By the, the best way to keep your posture up is to find the furthest thing away from you and keep on staring at it. That helps your posture. When you look down, when you look down, um, the, the, the term down, feeling down, comes from looking down. So it Fingo. actually changes your frequency. Bro, let me pause you, pause, but let me just pause you. Yeah. Oh, people, we're joined by Kevin Bennett today, Black House Speakers Lounge. Very true. In acting and in therapeutic drama, they literally teach in acting classes and workshops that your body language, and we're taught in psychology, body language is 80% of all communication. Yes, yes. Oh, it's the unspoken word. Yes. And people are so easy to read, and we're going to get into profiles and breaking down people's profiles on social media because that's deep. People don't get social media and how they, they are being read, and we are being offered up so, we're offering so much information, what's on your mind, Facebook, and there's people on levels reading us. For example, in acting classes, if you want to act as someone depressed, you're not going to act. You're not going to have yourself upright like that. Even yeah. if you do, there has to be some symbol that you don't feel too good about yourself or you don't have any high self-esteem. But literally, when you're changing people's moods, and you know this, Kevin, literally, they teach you, I want you to sit with an upright posture, even yes. 20 seconds of laughing in the mirror, applauding, first thing in the morning, it releases the brain chemical known as dopamine. So we was going into that at the very beginning. Well, 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 so it would go into I'm going to add one more to your arsenal. It, it, it's not just, um, um, there, there's, a, there's a system that you have inside of you. Right, so there's seven, there's seven systems, there's seven emotional systems you have inside of you. But there's one, there's two systems that I'm going to talk about that deals with depression. One called the seeking system. The what? And the seeking. Seeking, yes, seeking. The seeking system. So the seeking system, think about all the things you like to seek in life, like enthusiasm. That's what. Woo! Pleasure. I'm going to get my um, pen and paper. You better, carry on, I'm going to get my pen and paper. Carry on. Where is okay. school today? 2021. Happy New Year, Kevin Bennett. Carry on, I'm going to get my pen and paper. You get your pen and paper now. Get your pad. Get your pad. Come on now, school. Then. Carry on, brother. School okay. ain't locked down. Carry on. So there's seven types of emotional um, systems. One of them is called the seeking system. If you want to deal with depression or, or other emotions that really affect you, you have to look at your seeking system and your play system. Um, there, are, there are other systems, but these are the two systems that will save your life. And not only just save your life, but it will make you a happy person. So think about what the seeking system is about. The seeking, the, seek the seeking system, sorry, is pleasure. So what is pleasure, for example? Taste, um, smell, senses. sorry? The five senses? Yeah, so yeah, exactly, exactly. So taste, smell, but it's more of it, health. Um, yeah, what you touch, see, smell, imagination, gratification. They're all the seeking system. They're part of the seeking system. The things you hear, um, as I said, taste, smell, they're all part of the, the, the pleasure system of the seeking system. Teach. Then you have... And then you have enthusiasm. Enthusiasm makes you eager. And eagerness makes you more interested in the world. It makes you a happier person. Enjoyment, interest, they are part of the enthusiasm system. Then you have engagement. This is all the seeking system. Engagement. Now, here's the thing. What do we know when we're not engaged? What do we know about lockdown? We know that when people are engaged, it sends them the other way. It reverse engineers people. Come on. Them 
depression. So what is the reverse of it? The reverse of it is engagement. We need engagement as human beings. Come so on. engagement is sharing, participating. So think about as a child, what made you happy as a child? Let's go back to simple, remember? Don't do complicated. We complicate our lives and we get older. When we're young, we keep it simple. What does a child do? The child participates. The child deals with sharing. The child deals with taking part. The child um, deals with taking action. The child deals with, um, deals with um, engagement um, mm. and, and involvement. So they are part of the engagement system of the seeking system. When you're doing this, it is absolutely amazing. It works. And then you have interest. You have to learn to be interested and not be interesting. Too many people on social whoa, media. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you got to pause. And I'm pausing you for a good cause. Yeah. Recap one, seek, seeking, seeking system two, enthusiasm three, engagement four, interest. I love what you just yeah. said. You have to learn to be interested, not just interesting. Is that right? Right. So here's the thing. Too many people on social media and in the world are trying to be interested. Like, uh, um, interesting. They want everyone to look at them, look at them. But they're not taking time out to be interested in people. Wow. So you have to learn to be interested. You have to learn to be interested. You have to look at people and, in, and, and engage with people and communicate with people. A lot of times, all we're doing is throwing statements at people. And then we realize, and then all of a sudden, the world is, is separated from us. So instead of us throwing statements of what we want people to know about um, us, we have to learn to turn around and start to investigate and learn people. So we need to learn to be more interested in people instead of trying to be more, so I always get them mixed up. We have to learn to be more interesting. Interested, yeah. sorry, I'm not interesting, yeah? Be and so we have to, not in right. we have to, we have, Sorry, I'm getting it wrong. We have to learn to be more interested in people Instead of trying to be interesting to everyone. Come on. Don't you think it's a form yeah. of narcissism that people want everyone to be interested in them? Hey, look at my picture. Like, my status. Like, my dispute, my argument. Like, my video on TikTok or whatnot. Like, we are not interested. Um, Go ahead. It, it, well, it's, it's, sometimes it's that, but also it's insecurity as well a lot of times. Yes, sir. So sometimes it's insecurity. People don't want to be left alone. People don't want to be classed at the bottom of the, the pile or, or, you know, we live in a very hierarchical kind of world and environment. Yes, so sir. because we live in a hierarchical environment, what is, everyone wants to be at the top. Come so on. Even, the most, even the most insecure people want to, want to be seen to be special. But you remember, well, yeah, yeah. But remember, from a certain perspective, it's their job. Yes. Yeah. But, but here's the thing, right? We have two things going on at all times. We yes. have a, a, a man, I've got my friends Rich on here. So I've got Ronke on here. I've got Rich Jen on here. Amazing people. Yeah, I've got some amazing people. Love you guys. Welcome, everyone. Love, man. Well, well, yeah, some amazing people. So, so what we've got is this, right? Remember, at all times, we're having two conversations. So it's a conversation I'm having with you, and it's a conversation I'm having in my mind. So at all times, we're having two conversations. And most of the time, for most people, the two conversations are separate. So I may be saying to you, yeah, man, see my new top. I'm telling you, you know. But in, inside, I'm saying, I don't feel worthy. I don't feel good enough. I don't feel, I don't feel competent. I don't feel happy. So at all times, we're having two different conversations. Now, what we need to do is merge the two together. When you merge the two together, you would realize that you are not trying to sell to the world, but you're more trying to be interested in the world. And so, because when, you, when your self-thoughts come together with your external behavior, you become a better person. Oh, but a lot of people, when you're dying on the inside, you're trying your best to cover it on the outside. And I, I'm going to give you um, a kind of analogy based upon that. When we, were, when, when we were born, we were a precious diamond. Yeah, flawless mm. diamond when we were born. Okay. Yes, sir. And so everyone sees this precious diamond on in a child, right? You see it, and the child is so pure and beautiful. And oh. then all of a sudden, the world. And we love the baby. We're like, oh, why is that human nature? Exactly. The heart. Babies can turn violent people into good people. It changes dynamics, babies, right? So, so, so what happens when we're born? We're a precious diamond. But what happens, the environment around that precious diamond is what you call the shit, 
I apologize, I've got to swear, but it's relevant. It's the shit. And so the shit smears on the diamond. And so all of a sudden, the shit is you're not good enough. You're not worthy. You're black. You're, you're ugly. Look at your weave. Look at your this. Look at your horrible teeth. Look at your, you know, you're not fit. You're not sexy. You're not whatever it may be. So the, so the shit is smeared over the diamond. So the diamond, the diamond is who we are. The shit is who we think we are. So the diamond is who we are internally. Hey, yeah. yo, people, we're not, hey, hey, fire time right now. People, I want everybody up on this now to give a fire signal. Those who are listening on YouTube, on Instagram, don't worry about it. You're watching something that was already on live. But listen, fire signal for Kevin right now because, Kevin, you're dropping some nuggets, as Ron just said. You're dropping yeah. some nuggets. Heart sign and fire sign right now. So this is exactly how we start 2021. Brother, so, so yeah. So, so, so yeah, so, so, uh, so kind of breaking down how narcissism can work, but, but don't sometimes find someone guilty for it. So what happens, the diamond is who we are at the core, right? The, the shit is who we believe we are. You know, when someone says you're full of shit, that's actually true sometimes. We <laughs> believe in our mind that we're not good enough, we're not worthy, we're not smart enough. And then what happens, what do we do with shit? We try to sprinkle all this glittery stuff over the shit. So the glittery stuff is the narcissism. Yeah. Come on, the glitter- oh, stop, stop. Oh, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. I have to press the pause button <laughs> because what you're saying needs to be ingested and digested, my bro. Brother, <laughs> people need time to just think. People, any points of question for Kevin Bennett? I think we're going to have to do a part two because you know what? We're not willing Christian yet, but what you're saying is so profound. So necessary, so relevant for 2021 and beyond, brother. Brother, you remind me of a book I read by Paul McKenna, where he talks about the authentic self and the uh, uh, the made-up self. You remind me of a book I read years ago, because I love psychology. As actors and artists, especially actors, we've got to study psychology. We all yeah. should be studying psychology. Yeah. Brother, please give us time to take in what you just said. <laughs> Who's in? Church is in. Carry on, brother. Sorry, I just needed a moment. Carry on. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so as, as I said, you know, the, the, the diamond is who we are. The shit is who we think we are. Come because on. the world has sold, sold us that, our environments. Um, and the sprinkles, what we put all over the shit because we're embarrassed of the shit, is what we're trying to sell to the world. So the sprinkles is the nice cars we drive and the jewelry we, dro- we have. Somebody's trying to call you again? Yeah. Oh, we're always trying to call Kevin. Leave him alone, fam. Leave him alone. And I see it. Carry on, Kevin. I'm sorry, my microphone's going to know for some reason now because um, I don't know if people trying to call. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Is that okay? can, can we all hear Kevin? Please, Black Car Speakers Lounge, can we hear our guest, Kevin? I can hear you very well, my brother. Okay. Let us know if we can't hear. Our guest, Kevin Bennett, Black Car Speakers Lounge. I'm sure everyone can hear you. Okay, uh, we've got a few people in the room. <laughs> Carry on, Kevin. I know you're a very important guy, and that's why people are calling you. So we get it. We understand. So while we have you, we're grateful to have you, brother. Carry on. This is the greatest start to the new year for Black Car Speakers Lounge. Carry on, my right. brother. Thank you very much. So, so what happens, um, as I said, let me just repeat, because it's very important. Yes, the diamond is who we are. The shit is who we think we are. And the sprinkles is what we're selling to the world because we're feeling ashamed. That ashamed comes from our oh, self-conversation, mm. yeah? Which then leads to depression. So this is the reason why you see all these people with nice stuff externally. They're the sprinkles, but the self-conversation is feeling ashamed because of the environment or the hormones that we're going through, yeah? Jeez. Now, our goal is not to add more sprinkles and our goal is not to fight with the shit. Our goal is to wipe away the sprinkles and our goal is to wipe away the shit and go back to the place where you said the authentic self, the diamond. So our goal is to get back to the diamond. So if you think about even religion, religion is actually about that, you know, for some religions. If you think about it, it's like when you're young, you're pure. But as you get older, you, want, you go into church, you go into a different place because you want to get back to that diamond again. And that's what it's about. It's going from the diamond, the shit's introduced to you, which is classed as a sin, 
right? And even when religions are introducing sin to you, they make it, it's, it's making you, it's making the shit smell of the diamond. So all of a sudden, you're always trying to prove to the world, to religion, all the rest of it, that you're really the diamond, but you're always having a conversation that you're a sinner, which is the shit. And so Programming. the sprinkles is also religious as well, believe it or not. The sprinkles is, let me do as much things as possible because I want to deal with the shit. But the goal of it, spirituality, is wiping away the sprinkles, wiping away the shit, and getting back to the diamond. And that's the authentic self. Brother, big up, big up, big up, big up. Welcome, everybody, on Black House Speaking Land. You know what came to my mind, bro? I'm going to keep it 100 of you. There was a time where, brother, I will be asking for certain things, talking to the universe, praying to God. And when it comes, unexpectedly, just out of nowhere, the opportunity, like, for example, I got a chance to go on television to one of my first TV appearances about over 10 years ago. And, brother, when it was happening... And I was surrounded by all of the elements of television. I was like, shoot, do I deserve this? Why is this happening? Is this happening to me? Man, I don't, I'm not as good as these people. That's all the shit that, that I've introduced you from childhood. Yes. That you're not by worthy. Society, that I don't deserve what I'm at. These people are better than me. All of that, I've had to wrestle with that, bro. And I yeah. fight with that. And I constantly reaffirm to myself not just with words, but with actions, proving to myself, I am worthy of it. Because I do believe the universe will serve what you feel you deserve. The universe will serve what you, you feel you deserve. If you feel you deserve shit, and this goes for relationships, work, money, whatever, and I know you know about this, Kevin, you're going to get it. A, a lot of sisters, women, may talk to me and say, Colts, I was with this guy, he was a piece of shit, but I love him. He's a piece of shit, but I love him. And they pull it out, the onus on the guy. And vice versa for men, they're like, yeah, cool, you know, I was with this girl, she dogged me out. And I tell them the painful, harsh truth. I said, it's not your fault, but it's your responsibility for who you attract. Well, you know, the reason why you're 100% correct is because, okay, we're made out of atoms. Oh! Yeah? Woo! And inside of an atom neutrons, quirks, photons, and so on and so forth. When you're in electron state, electron state are the negative frequencies. Mm -hmm. Doubt, worry, opt, uh, doubt, worry, anger, jealousy, depression, so on and so forth. When you're in an electron state, you can only mix with electron people. So a lot of times when I meet someone, a lot of times when, I, when I'm working with a client and they talk about their relationships and all the rest of it, I'm not interested. I mean, I am interested, but I, that's not my yeah, direction. Yeah, yeah, my right. direction that I ask them straight away is what were yeah. you feeling and going through when you met that person? And 100% of the time, they'll always tell you, I was going through depression at the time, or someone died, or this or that. So they met that person at that frequency. When they wow. say misery loves company, what it is, frequency loves frequency. So wow. anytime you find yourself in a relationship or a situation, where you find yourself angry and, 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 and frustrated in your relationship and the rest of it, it's because you put yourself there from a frequency perspective. It's not your partner's fault. Your partner was always in that frequency. They could only be with you in the frequency that you was in yourself. So Jeez. in order for you to oh, be in a relationship... Oh, oh, oh. Yo, 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 yo. You know they call it the Holy Ghost, right? In church. And you have to move. Move. Brother, I'm, I'm just so excited. Brother, big up Marcel. Where I say, my friend, big up my brother, Neil, and everybody in Black House Speakers Lounge. This is Kevin Bennett. Take a good look at that black skin. That beautiful smile. That man Oh, my God. All that wisdom flowing from him. Uh -huh. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Uh -huh. Carry on, Kevin, man. You make, I'm, I'm, I, I feel, bruv. Carry on, carry on. I'm just sitting back. Carry on. This is so, so your what is, carry on. It was 100% of the time, not even 99 or 98, 100% of the time, when uh, it becomes to, to like a relationship issue that's been consistent and continuous, is because they've been living in the same frequency. Now, when you see people naturally fall and um, break apart, they're not breaking apart because they've fallen out of interest. They're breaking apart because they've fallen out of frequency. So Ooh! one person may move into a neutral zone, and the other person in an electron zone. 
Yeah, so all of a sudden, when you've got, so neutron zone is in between protons, positive, and electrons, negative. So some, one person may push and push and push, and they move into a new frequency, and their partner's still in the old frequency. So all of a sudden, they don't see, they don't connect, not just eye to eye, but frequency to frequency. Oh! So and push for more, and the other one remains in a dark place. And so when you hear, for example, a woman say, I, I want to move on, but I love him. What she's doing strategically and consciously is moving herself back into that frequency to be with him. And then so they both suffer in pain. Head and heart. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. The head is this conversation oh, and the heart is the frequency. Yes. Yes, sir. Jeez. Mindset as Chucky. Book up. Big up Chucky. What I said. Brother. Brother. What you're telling... Bro, people, this live will be saved on our YouTube, follow, like, subscribe, Black Car Speakers Lounge, and on uh, Black Car Speakers Lounge on uh, Instagram. So don't worry. Anytime you have a downtime or feel down, it's a list of things. Let's go through those lists. Is it guilt, being ashamed, fear, worry? So it's all here. It's a mind war then, bro. Is that what you're telling me? Well, 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 some of it are minds and some of it are based upon actual... Um, frequencies. So here's the thing, you've got 25 skills of emotion from my educational perspective. If someone comes up with more tomorrow, um, then I yield to it. But there's 25 main skills of emotion, but you've also got seven different emotional systems within you as well. So the seven systems that you have within you is the seeking system, what we just spoke about. Yes. The fear system, the rage system. But here's a very important system, what we've walked away from as adults. And sometimes we try to beat our children out of it or we curse our children out of it, which is, I would probably say, alongside the seeking system, is probably the most important system, which is what they call the play system. The play system is a system that makes you happy, that moves you away from depression. The play system is so important, it's unreal. Find things to do that is part of your play system. Learn to be playful again. As adults, we stop being playful. I we love be being playful, bro. That's me. Right. People see me as a madman. I don't care. If I get on the train and the bus, I chat to strangers. I don't business what people... My mom's always taught, taught me, can't you? Don't business about what people think about you. And I carry that. I used to be... When I was younger, I never had all the confidence in the world. I was very quiet. I'm a twin. My twin sister, she was rowdy. Like, trust me. <laughs> She was on things. My twin sister, like, in it. Don't play with her. But now, she was the one that was in theatre when I was younger. I used to watch her at the National Youth Theatre. But now it's me that's in the theatre, television, acting, and my sister's more... She's still that fire, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm more confident now, thanks to the help of my sister and my people. I've, I've grown into confidence. So it's like, you've got to be playful, people. Don't worry. You know, we become too British, Kevin. We become too, oh, yes. Don't talk to anybody. Get on the train. Look in the ceiling. Don't make eye contact. Have a mask on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What is it? He's looking at me. Yeah, my God. Uh, let me see what the bad news is saying. 10 were wounded, 15 dead. Tuesday, Wednesday, same news all exactly. the time. Negative. We've got to be, yeah, we've got to be more playful. Come we've on. We've got to be more playful. So, you know, and if you really want happiness, and move away from depression, you have to write down a list of all the things that you can do to be more playful. Even as adults nowadays, we go to, I don't know, the fun thing. We don't want to get on a ride. We're like, no, I don't want to harm myself. We're we're like, we're like, we're like, we're like, we're yeah, all of a sudden, we're like, we don't want to get on fun thing rides anymore. You know? Yeah, as, <laughs> exactly. So we need to have the play system. It's very important that we have a play system. And then um, we have what you call a care system. Now, the care system is, is, is more... Is more um, directed towards women. So right. The care system um, enacts when women normally, after they have a baby, they panic for a while and they get worried for a while, can I look after this baby? And they go through a transitional stage of needing to get up in the night and in the morning and this and all that. Then after what happens, a, a hormone is released within them and then they have a, a care system. They're a lot more caring. So if it, it's record show, um, and statistics and stats show that women with children are more caring than women without children. Because women wow. without children don't have the caring system the way that women with children do. Jeez. So you don't really know a woman 
until she has children. Wow. Brother, you went there. I mean, we've got some questions. Brother, we're going to have to have a part two. You're going to have to have a part two, you know? Like, this is like end game and like Avengers Infinity. <laughs> this is Infinity. Next, next, next week is end game. If you are available, brother, we'd love to have you next week. But before we relinquish this, somebody just, uh, yeah, is unconditional love dangerous? And that's from Jen, excuse me for my misreading of your name, Jenny Asha. Is unconditional love dangerous, my brother? Wow, that's a very powerful question. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's very deep. Un is unconditional love dangerous? <clears throat> I I I'm going to put it another way. Uncon if, if, you, if you're holding yourself back from loving, it's dangerous to you. Br brilliant. Yeah, and so here's the thing. First and foremost, the hierarchy of love. Love God first. Love you second. Love everyone else finally. So you can love people unconditionally and if they let you down, you go back to the source of um, love, God. Then you go and connect with yourself. You build yourself back up until, that, until you feel secure again. Then you can go back to unconditional love if that's the case. But if you love someone, if you love someone more than you love yourself, that's dangerous. If you love someone more than you love God, that's dangerous. Very dangerous. So unconditional love should come under the, the barriers of, of uh, God first. The paradigm, Or yeah. spirituality, or whatever you want to call it. God first, you second, and you can love unconditionally third. And if they let that down, you can go back to your source, you can go back to you, and then that's you'll be okay. Because here's the thing. Most people believe that they're doing unconditional love, but they don't love themselves. So if you don't love yourself, you're not giving out unconditional love to others because it's a frequency thing. So sometimes someone feels like they're giving out um, love, but they're giving out an element of connection, of pain that they think is love. Whoa. Yeah. You're so a lot of times people much. don't believe that, people don't realize that they're giving out pain more than love. So I give it a oh. If you're going through pain, for example, right, you may play a song that is going to break you even more. You start playing too much. No more drama. Mary J. Blige. Exactly. No more drama. And I tell women, don't sing that. You're affirming that. If you yes. say, because one of the laws of attraction or one of the laws of the universe that I've been reading on is the law of resistance. And what you resist persists. What you yes. resist persists. And if you say, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want in 2021, you're going to invite more of what you say you don't want. I don't know my drama, girls. I don't know a boyfriend who's going to be dishonest. I don't know a boyfriend who's not going to have money. I don't know a boyfriend who doesn't drive. He only has the oyster. If you keep saying that, you're going to keep getting what you put passion into. Yeah. Very correct, Kevin. Be because to even to, to, to respond back to that question, to add a bit more to it as well. Go ahead. Is even, when, even when you question if unconditional, if you should give out unconditional love, is because the frequency that you may be dancing within at that precise time is making you question about love in general, which then becomes your, your crutch. It hinders you. Jeez. But for example, you wouldn't say, so for example, if you love your child unconditionally, you don't have a conversation about it. You just do it. You're in that just frequency. But when you're questioning it, you sh you, there's a problem, there's a blockage already. Damn. Brother, you know what? We're going to relinquish this interview. But before you do, I mean, you've said so many things that I want to go deep. I could be here with you all year. Yeah. yeah. But we're not going to do that. Um, brother, can you quickly, briefly, for actors and performers, and we're all performers in our own right. We all take on characters psychologically for the jobs we do, the roles we play. Could you briefly just talk on the profile makeup you say something that you work with actors. You know, Kevin Bennett, he works with actors, performers. Can you just give okay, us so a really big question on how you work with actors if, if we're talking, if, if we're, if we're talking, um, if we're talking about acting, let, let me break down the science of, oh my gosh, I'm telling you guys about acting and you guys are the actors. Yeah. Can't wait for this. Let me, let me break down the science of, of acting and the film world, yeah? Come on. Every single film, um, every single film that's out there, they have 
certain storylines and have certain characters. Yeah? No matter what the film is, they all fall into what we're going to discuss very quickly. Okay? Right. Um, so you've got what you call the leader. Okay? So if we're talking about okay. the character, yeah? yeah. So the attractive character. One yes. of the attractive characters, and it's in life as well, but one of the attractive characters is the leader. The yes. leader, um, the goal of the leader is to lead the audience from one place to another. They're the mm -hmm. leader, yeah? So they've got a way of leading the audience. The audience yes. follows them, right? They, that, that's the, the, the role of that character. Another one is the adventurer. So like, remember um, Indiana Jones? Yeah, He's yeah. The adventurer. So the adventurer is someone who don't have the answers, but they're revealing it as you go along. Oh, so just yeah. like with Indiana Jones, yeah, there was like, you're revealing it as you go along and, and you're discovering it as you go along. You know, even like Columbo, he was the adventurer. He, they, they, you're finding the clues together. Come yeah? on. So you have the adventurer. Then you have the reporter. Um, the reporter, like the evangelist, the reporter, is like Oprah Winfrey when she's interviewing. The narrator, the inter yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah, so, so the reporter's job is to identify what's going on, and find the truth and find relevant information in order to give to the audience. Yes, so, sir. Um, that's the reporter. That's the role of the reporter. Then you have the, what you call the reluctant hero. The reluctant hero is the one who he don't really want to do it, but in the name of saving the world, he's got Neo. to do it. So how Neo. many films do you know? Exactly, like Neo. Yeah. Mm. Um, so for example, Neo is the, the reluctant hero. He doesn't that's really right. want to do it, but I'm given a gift. I've got to do it. Okay, so if you if you kind of look at um, those, but we go a bit more. Then you've got us versus them. So you know, like you have, um, is it called Michael? Is it Michael Moore? That's like us against the government. Yes. So a lot of stuff on Facebook at the moment and YouTube, right? Is us against vaccines, us against the government, us yeah. against whatever. So even like in documentaries, a lot of documentaries are more about us versus them. That's right. That's yeah. right. Very very exactly. good analogy. Yeah. Um, and then you've got um, the before and after. The before and after are using a lot of commercials. So once I was thin, I took this special pill. Um, sorry, once I was fat, I took this special pill, and now I'm thin. And you'll see that in a lot of commercials and stuff like that. That's, so that's, right. that, that's the before and after effect. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the amazing discovery. The amazing discovery is like, I've got this amazing product, and I'm going to show you it right now kind of thing. So once again, it goes back to sometimes advertising. You know, yeah, I'm going to show you something. Don't tell no one about this product. This product changed my life forever. Yeah? So, exactly, right? Yeah. So, that's, um, that's uh, the um, amazing discovery. Then you've got one called the storytelling. Yes, fundamental. Right, you've got the storytelling. So, I'll give that storytelling in a second. Then you've got the secret. And so, the secret is just like the secret itself. Yeah? So, the secret is, you know, like, I'm going to tell you the 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 uh, um the um the way to be eternally rich forever. And the four thousand, yeah, yeah. yeah. Told ten thousand years ago, and we just found the scrolls through it. And I'm going to share the special secret with you. Yes. And if you think about the marketing of what the secret done, and yes. for the book, yeah. it was that marketing what they done. Even That's at the right. starting of the secret, when you watch the video, they made it look like you was in a cave and all of that, and they found the music, the scrolls. Advertising exactly of the secret. Yeah. And then you've got what you call the third person testimonial. So the third person testimonial is based upon. I'm not going to talk about myself, but I'll get the world around me to talk about myself. So they do that in nighttime um, commercials as well. That's you know, right. You normally find that in commercial where it's like, don't listen to me. This is what these guys said about it. Mm. And all of a sudden, you know, um, they are explaining, well, this is what the product done for me and this is what the service done for me. And so Very that's what good. you call social proof. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what they call social proof. So in the world, so in the world of acting and, and in general, when we are putting a more, uh, when we're profiling people, um, so you may do profiling for good reasons. You may do profiling for bad reasons. Now, when we're profiling people, you, uh, have, you have different types of um, things you have to investigate as a profiler. So yeah. I've been called into companies to do profiling before. Yeah? yeah. And I'll show you how police do it. I'll show you how Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and Twitter will do it. And I'll show you what I do 
Um, wow. Based upon People, I'm now, before you carry on, Kevin, everyone listen to what Kevin's about to say. It relates to everyone, not just performing artists. Every man, woman, and child. What we're about to say ain't gibberish, ain't gobbledygook. It's not, oh, we're here to make you feel good by saying nice, pretty words. This relates to you. Yeah, you. Does, yeah, Every yeah. last one of you, please take notes, take some more. Kevin, go ahead, my brother. Okay, so what they do first and foremost, and let's, let's break it down from, I don't know, we're all on Instagram or Facebook. Clearly we are right now, right? So let's break it down from an Instagram or Facebook perspective, but let's start more with Facebook, okay? Because Facebook owns Instagram, so they've got, they've right. got their al algorithms are even stronger. And so WhatsApp first, as well. They own WhatsApp, I believe. Yeah. Sorry? They, they own WhatsApp as well. Yes, WhatsApp uh, also. Yeah, and they've got yes, some sir. smaller companies as well. Yes, sir. Um, so first and foremost, they take your name. Your name, your age, um, they don't start. They don't start with your color yet. They don't start with their yet. Good. They, when you right. So gender first. Sorry. Gen name, age, gender. Name, age, gender, date of birth. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So now they've got more on you. If they were fraudsters, they could break into your account with that. That's yeah. how deep it is. Okay. So as simple as you, you're filling this out. You don't understand what's happened at this point. Yeah, even your location, sorry, your location, you're in England. London. That's right, location. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that's the starting of it. That's the starting of the profiling. Police also do that as well when they're uh, profiling people. The um, governments do that when they're profiling CIA, the FBI, um, MI5, they all do the same thing. So what that's I'm doing, right. what I'm telling you now, is all universal to major conglomerates, government bodies, and organizations. And I use it. Facts. Facts. Yeah. So then they want to look at your um, religious beliefs. Okay? In no particular order. I'm just I'm going around randomly. Yes, sir. So it's not linear. So your religious beliefs. Are you Muslim or Christian? Are you yeah. Hindu or whatever it may be? Okay? Yeah. And so they start to dig deeper. They don't do it straight away because they don't want to scare people off. It's all stages. Right? Come on. So... They want to know what is your religious beliefs, okay? Now, if you, you don't believe you're sharing that, but the more you like certain things and the more you kind of say, yes, I love that quote, what Jesus said, or I love that, what you don't realize is that it's going against your profiling. Wow. And so every time you press the like button, and every time you press save, that's why you can go into the history of your likes. And what they do, they start building an algorithm of the things you like and, and who you are as a person. So all of a sudden, you're like, okay, you're always talking about um, um, Christianity. You're always talking about COVID. That's what you even see nowadays. If you post something that says COVID, something you have to say, right, we're going to make sure we're going to fact check this situation. Wow. Right? We're giving people information. So they, that shows that, that they, it, things that you upload, they're reading it in real time. Yeah, so you may think you're uploading a random video or picture. AI. Like they're actually reading it. Yeah, because AI. even when you upload something with COVID, I dare you to upload it and see what it says straight away underneath it. Yeah? Brilliant. And even when you upload um, a, um, a video or you upload um, a song, it goes straight to PRS. That's right. And so PRS straight away would say, we don't want that person using this song. And then all of a sudden, it will tell you, are you, do you have the permission to do it? Because yeah. it's all linked to all the systems globally, PRS and mm. the rest of it, okay? Um, government databases. And so that is sheer proof that you are always being tracked. If you, you said, I don't believe it, you're being tracked. But here's one more that I'm going to tell you why you're being tracked, okay? So you see something, you click on something, okay? Let's say you click on a back massager, right? Yeah. When you come off that, that when you come off of that advert, you come off Instagram or Facebook. What happens? That back massager follows you everywhere you go. You go on Google, the advert pops up. You go here, the advert pops up. Or the reverse way round. You're on Google, you click on something, all of a sudden you go to Facebook, and yeah. that same advertising follows you around. So that's what you call cookies. And they call it Yeah, and you accept them, isn't it? And you press accept. Yeah, and you can accept. accept. But, but here, here's the thing. You accept cookies when you go onto websites, but you don't. But you don't need to press. You don't need to accept cookies when it comes to advertising per se. 
you could just click onto an advert and then they have what you call a retargeting campaign. So the retargeting marketing now follows you around the web. In order for you to get rid of it, you have to clear your um, cookies and your cash. Right. And then it will get rid of it. Yeah? Cookies. So <laughs> that's how it works. And it's very important why I'm saying this, what, where we're going to when it comes to profiling. So I'm not actually going off. I'm just giving you proof no, and evidence no point, of how you're being profiled. Okay? So then next up, you have, um, as we spoke about our religious beliefs, then you have like drink and drugs. Every time you talk about drinks or you talk about drugs, you get profiled. Okay, what kind of drinker is this person? Oh, how frequently wow. do they drink? And how do we know that? Because when you're even marketing on um, Facebook or Instagram, they, you can boil down your demographic down to a T, yeah? Yes. Based upon that alone. Um, so do you take drinks? Do you, uh, do you drink? Do you take drugs? All of that is put into your profile, okay? Yeah. You don't see the profile, but it's put into your profile. You're a drinker, you're 26, you're believing this, you live in this place, it's all building up. Every time you like, uh, every time you, you add someone or you tag someone in your pictures, say, yeah, man, this is me and Courtney, and this is me and this person. All of a sudden now, you're building your social surroundings. So now, if you go back into your, um, go back into your settings on your page, it will tell you who's your friends, who's your family. So it will say your family, your cousin, right, this, person, this, person, this person, this person. Your uncle is this person, this person, this person, this person. Your auntie is this person. This is your son. And then all they do, so what they do, once they've got um, your, your son or your cousin or your mother or your father, what happens then? They then profile them. And right. so, the, so the spider web goes wider and wider and wider and wider and wider. Yeah? And then you, next you've got your health. You know, when you start talking oh, about, oh, me have butt pee and me have leg pee and me have this pee and me have that pee and a very, very, or do you know what? I broke my leg the other day. Alexia is a snitch. Into your database. Sorry? Alexia is a snitch, people. Alexia was snitch. People talking exactly. all kinds of things in their yard. Alexia knows, fam. It's all part of the same system. So Alexia will send, send it to the same place where, where Google and Instagram will send their stuff as well. Yeah, so it all goes to the same database behind the scenes. Now, legally, they're not allowed to do it, but, but, but they do it. Yeah, they do it. Okay? Brother, I'm going to quickly say something. I, I want to really conclude because I want to save this for next week. I want to, sure. brother, I'm going to ask for everybody, can we have you again next week, sir? I've never had yeah, another yeah, yeah. guest come on consecutively, one after the other. But because what you're saying is powerful, it needs to be just like a free course meal cut up. You know, yeah. I'd love to bring you back on next week. I'm not concluding right at the second, but I just, I'm asking you, brother, I want you, and we want you to come back on next week, brother. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. as I was saying, oh God, I just missed my point now. Because I'm just so excited about all this stuff that you're, you're laying down so much information. What comes to my mind is The Matrix, the movie. Um, and it's funny, I've got the clip of it ready to play as an outro for the show today is a very important part, but we're all plugged in to this system. And what came to my mind when you're speaking was, real money is not paper money, but real money is people. Yeah. Real yeah. money is people, and I know you know about common law, you know about yeah. signature, and you know about how people garner contracts from just your signature alone, not physical money or legal tender. I don't know. Well, you know well, 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 yeah, you're correct. And, and even to add to that as well, um, all of our um, our um, national security numbers and our names and stuff are actually traded on the stock exchange, brother. And that's our countries, and our GDPs and stuff like that as well. See, that's what we're going to have a part two because we're going to go into that. And also, my brother, I would like people who want to hire, book you for zooms and for workshops. How can we find you, Mr. Kevin Bennett? Where can we go to get your services for coaching, counseling, therapy, business? Where can we, how can we get a hold of you? On Gram or LinkedIn? Please tell us where we can come and find you. Um, so my, 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 um, i trying to remember. Um, <laughs> my, Kevin Bennett, everyone. My, Kevin uh, my Bennett. Facebook is simply just Kevin Bennett. Um, and then my Instagram is Kevin underscore Bennett and the number one. Yes. If you just type in Kevin Bennett, it, it, 
Instagram. People, people find Kevin Bennett is my friend. You can message him. You yes. find him on my friend list. Brother, yeah, and then I want to inbox me from there. And, and um, inbox, I'm brother. I'm ready to do a podcast as well. Um, awesome. this, this podcast is called Kevin Bennett's Trauma. And, um, and, and the reason why it's called Kevin Bennett's Trauma is because even though it may not be my trauma directly per se, every time we share information between each other, so if I told you some bad news right now, it becomes your trauma. You may not be able to go to sleep at night. It may change your, your diet. Uh, it may change your mood. It may So all of a sudden, Frequency. we're always exchanging traumas. And so the show that I'm doing is about helping people that's going through mental and emotional trauma. Um, and, and so, yeah, that, that, that show I'm I'm going to be when, is the, when is that show, brother? When is that show? Uh, I'll be starting that um, in about two to three weeks. Awesome. Um, yeah, so if some people want to participate on the show, that's going to be Somebody's ringing him again. Somebody's ringing Kevin again. See, this is how big you kept. No, see, that is great. The brother's in demand. My phone hasn't rung once. <laughs> you get me? Brother Kevin is in demand, people. So we need to follow and get more information from Kevin. I am praying that we can get Kevin back on next week because this was just an introduction. Kevin is fantastically deep. And I took notes today and I wanted to go into a bit of common law, go into business and how we can overcome the trauma of all the stuff that's going on the media right now. I, for one, I'm not watching the news like I used to like last year. It's too much trauma. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah. I'm personally not doing it, and I invite everyone, take time with what you feed. I say, we say this every week, what you feed in your ears, <laughs> ears, ears, you know, ears. <laughs> <laughs> but we do listen with our eyes in a lot of ways. There's, 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 yeah, you do listen, true. and we do taste with the ears, and we see with our mouths. That's deep, yeah. and our noses. But I, I'm not feeding from television, bro, because it's just too depressing. I'd say that as a solution. So, brother, as we conclude, what things can you give us to take away as homework for next week, my brother? What can we do now, practically, as homework, sir? Oh, good question. Um, Briefly, I'll well, say. We need, to, we need to regulate our moods. You know, um, what we can do next week, we can go through what I call the life board. And the life board breaks down the different parts of people's existence. So for example, I've got my life board right here. And this is like my lifestyle and all the different types. Is that like a vision board? So, sorry? Is that a vision board? No, I, I'm not a big fan of vision boards. Okay. Um, I believe that a vision board is only a part of your, of your nine parts of, well, the minimum of nine parts of your, your, your life. So nine for parts. example, Mm. It's, it's like, I see so many people with vision boards, but how do you get there? So in this case, for example, um, we've got like, right here is your lifestyle. But underneath it, as you see, I've got investments. I haven't updated this in a long time. So in order to have the lifestyle, you've got to have the investments. In order to have the investments, you, you know, as well, you've got to have the business. You know, so, it, 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 you know, then I look at core values and I look at so many different things. So to just go back to, because I don't want to go too far away from what we're talking about. The first part, the most important part of your life and your world is your feelings, yeah? So I've got a certain amount of feelings that I, they're what you call my non-negotiables. I am not going to make no relationship, person, or body going to make me affect, uh, affect the feelings that I need to feel on a daily basis. So first and foremost, what I would like people to do is write down two things. One, well, no, it's not two things. I break it up even more. Write columns, write the columns down, uh, draw some columns, yeah? And column number one is how do I feel? We need to find out where we are. I'm just writing, right. I'm just writing that everything you're saying, brother. So number one is... Yeah, so firstly, how do I feel? Yeah? You need to identify where you are because we can't travel somewhere until we identify where we are. So how do I feel? The second question you need to ask yourself, why? Why do I feel that way? You need, to, you need identification. Just like if you get stopped by the police, yeah, they want ID. Yeah, so stop your feelings and, 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 and frisk them down. Frisk your feelings down, pat it down and say, hold on, why are, you, why are you the way you are? Yeah? So be a policeman to your feelings or a police person, right? So um, how do I feel? Why? Why do I feel that way? Um, secondly, how would I love to feel? But now we're talking journey, okay? Mm -hmm. And why would you love to feel that? The justification for behavior and action. And so once you just put that part down, 
then you can start writing down what my non-negotiables are. So those are the three things? Uh, four. Four? Oh, where, where are you? Why? Um, so so, um, so how, how do I feel? That's okay, one. Okay, how do you feel? That's right. Sorry, that's right. I'll put that at the top. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. Two, why? Why do you feel that way? Very so good. Just remember, you've got to frisk it down. You've got to find out about your feelings. Pat it yeah. down. Pat it down. You know what I mean? Find, find, find the... Find the gun and drugs on there, you know what I mean? Like, That's you right. Arrest them. Stop and search, them. Mate. You got to arrest them, put them in prison. Yeah? That's right. Let them go. Um, uh, the, the second, the third question is, um, how would I love to feel? Now we're talking about desire. Come on. Yeah. And the fourth one is why. Now, that, that's where your why's come from, mostly. That's yeah? so, you, so you got your why. You got two sets of why's people don't know. You got the why, why are you running away from where you're running away from? And why, why are you running towards why you're running towards? So one is fear and the other is desire. So you've got Jeez. two sets of why, not one. I love and then that. Once you've identified that, then you can write down your non-negotiables. You can now say, once you've identified, I don't want to feel depressed anymore, then you can write down your non-negotiables. So your non-negotiable is, I am only going to accept. Don't write down, I'm not going to, don't write down as your non-negotiable. I'm not going to feel depressed anymore because you're bringing that back, back into your right. life. That's right. You're resisting, so you're bringing it about in existence. That's exactly. right. Go so ahead. what you've got to do for the last one is now write the opposite of it. So, for example, if you say, just a simplistic one, if you say in your first ones, I don't want to be dep um, depressed, then why you're depressed? Your, non your non-negotiable now is, I'm not, um, happiness is a must. So Come on. write that down. Happiness Gratitude is a must. and happiness is a must. Yeah. <laughs> Coffee in it. That song in it. Gratitude is a must. Come on exactly. now. Yeah. Gratitude so, is so I, that, That's what I would say the homework to take away. Because we can talk about business, but once again, business people are committing suicide every day. Jeez. We can talk about careers, and but once Back. again, surgeons have the highest suicide rate. We can talk about um, a, a job you can do right now. But, you know, for example, um, uh, dentists have one of the highest dep the depression rates. That's so, so until we fix our feelings, the rest of it is non void. It doesn't make sense. And you know what comes to my mind, brother, because I used to be a man that goes to church enough. It says, seek ye first in the Bible, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all things will be added unto you. Yes. Not, oh, get all of the house and the car and then you're empty on the inside. And then another part of the Bible says, what does it profit a man to lose his, to benefit the whole world and lose his soul, you know? Yes. So there's a lot of rich people, and you know them, and I know them, who have a lot of things but are dead on the inside. So yeah, people exactly. are chasing the thing, and they feel they're going to get fulfillment from it. But in fact, what you said, brother, is finding out your sole purpose and getting uh, satisfaction from within. I love it, bro. I love it. I love it. Exactly. You know, as I said, I'm, I'm, do I'm going to be doing this show. So if someone would like to be on the show and kind of like, you know, be if they're going through their moods and emotions, we'll be doing like sessions on the show and we'll actually bring you from <clears> one place to another place. So I'll actually do the journey with you. Um, I said it'll be a podcast show so you can do it. I'm, I'm involved. I'm involved, brother. Brother, I'm yeah. a believer in getting counselling. I'm not ashamed to tell anyone that I am going for it. Not because I'm That's mad. I think, I, I, don't need, I think we all need huh? counselling. I think we all need it. You, I, I'm just going to put the question to you. Do we all, we, every last one of us, I think even more so if you're looking to get married and get into a relationship, you have no business in getting in those things unless you go for therapy and counselling on yourself. I believe so. Like We're taking sell the car. Don't sell the car until you fix it up. It's got to go through its diagnostics. Fix it up so it can be best for the, net, for the person that's going to purchase it. We all need to go for it. But there's a taboo, in the, especially in the black community, Oh no no, we're not a madman, you know. We're not going for no go for it. We need to. Well, well that's it. the thing. Do you know? Do you know what it is, right? See, I, I've got so much like you know challenges on on the outside. You know what I mean? Away from my world and stuff. And what I've learned, and most people don't want to hear this. Um, in order to grow, the black community at the moment, in order for us to grow, we have to move away from certain cultural um, hindrance. Come on. And, um, and issues. Um, in order for us to go on the world stage and really kick ass on the world stage alongside 
the Chinese and the Jews and the, we need to fix a lot at home first. We, we haven't even stepped onto the world stage yet. We're, we're, still, we're still in little small pockets of communities fighting over foolishness. Come on. Yeah. And getting caught up in little uh, bickering. When Stupidness. When, when, just, just very quickly. Do you know why China is, is probably the, one of the most powerful countries in the world at this precise time? When the rest of the world was at war, China was sitting back and watching and building. Think about China going to war with other countries the way that America was going to war. America and all those countries were getting tired, burning themselves out, losing loads of money. Same thing with Britain. When they were all going to war, China was in the background building up, building up, building their industry, building this. And by the time everyone looked up, China stepped into the... Someone's trying to pull Kevin again. See, Kevin's so busy. Cleaned up. Do you know what I'm saying? Cleaned up. Yeah? And so... We have to be like China. We have to be like China with that mindset and, and turn around and build it up behind the scenes very quietly and then go onto the world stage and people's like, damn, we're too busy on the world stage saying, please, sir, can I have more? I want <laughs> reparations. And so you spend so much time wanting reparations that you're not thinking about a system to build your own. Come yes, on. Yes, they ask reparations. Yes, they do. But I don't want to spend... 50 years of my life saying, please, sir, can you give me what's owed? I you agree. What I'm I agree. Yeah? So we need to start building up our own system. Now, when you look at, like, I'm not saying that these are good families. I'm talking about how they became powerful. So yes, you look at the Rockefellers and you look at all of these other families that we, are, we don't necessarily agree with, what did they do? They sent their children into across the world from young, and let them go into the banking sector. Let them Rock go into the government. The Rock Rock Rock. world. Right. Yeah. And what did they do? They said, learn and come back. Hold on a second. Beach. What did the Chinese do? They sent 5,000 students to England. 5,000 students to America. 5,000. And they said, learn You've and exchanged. come back. What do we do? We can't even leave South London. Yeah. Or, do you what I'm saying? We, yeah. we don't have it in us to turn around. I'm talking about the collective, not... I'm not yes, sir. Yes, sir. Africans, African, West Indians, African. as our black people. Absolutely right. You're right. We go this weekend, we're going to rum kitchen. We go this, we're going to say, we go in summertime, we're going to Brooklyn Park. We go whatever. Beaver, we're going to be for rum. We're going to say, we're going to be traveling. <laughs> what are you going if you're traveling? Yeah, man, I'll tell you the truth, you know. Where, where, where are we going? Hey, you know, we're going to go to Dubai, you know, because it's lit in Dubai. Are we going to go? Are we going to own nothing in Dubai, bro? We don't exactly. own nothing in Dubai or Abu Dhabi or the Emirates. Exactly. exactly. So what I do now, I mm. go around the world. And do you know how good it felt when I met Nicholas Sykes and David Cameron and sat down with them? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Hey, hey, stop. You ain't going to mention those names here. Yeah? And then just run. You ain't going to run over those names. You met who? Nicholas Sykes, the ex-French president. This is just before um, he got, um, um, they brought really him to the charges. Um, this is 2018, early 2018, and I met David Cameron. Now, Nick wow. Sykes, he doesn't normally speak um, English properly, so he he normally talks in French. Then he was have a you know, have a translator. Nick Sykes, he said something, and I was the only one of two other black people was in the room. Yeah, Teach. he said something, and he taught me something. Nick Sykes, he said, "Here's what the world is worried about: Europe." Yeah. Africa is going to take over Europe in the next 25 years. That's their belief system. Oh, let me just walk that crowd, They said the young emerging crowd of Africans are taking over, are going to take over Europe within the next 25 years they're looking at. Because the young African crowd, they're educated, they're smart, they're, they're becoming more powerful, you know, there's money in Africa, and they're becoming more witty as well. They're Come on. Picked. That's and the new superpower. They're part. growing as well. So as well. Not like the population of Africa is growing, but it's educated Africans Teach. that are growing. And so when you look at educated Africans that are growing, what they're now saying, oh, hold on one second. So if one household, for example, in Africa has mm -hmm. four children and one household in England, for example, have two children, they're in trouble by two. Yeah, they're 50% more going to have uh, the dominance of of population, but also the dominance of education. Wow. So, because 
Nigerians and Ghanaians especially are focused on education. Yes, sir. I'm not, I see, I'm not telling you from my point of view, I'm telling you what Nicholas Sarkozy said. Wow, yeah. people, listen, man. Listen. Yeah. Oh. And so this, is, this, is, this was in 2018, okay? Now, Tony Blair also, I haven't met Tony Blair before. I met David Cameron, Nicholas Sarkozy. Tony Blair said something, I know we're kind of gone off the time now. Sorry, I'll say No, 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 go, go on, carry on, carry on. Right. Tony Blair said something really important and powerful concerning Brexit. And I took that analogy um, to make it be us. What he said, he said, you've got a table and you've got big boys on the table. This is what Tony Blair said, if you can find the, find the speech where he said. He said, um, and it was concerning Brexit, by the way. He said, America is a big boy on the table. He said, China is a big boy. They're big boys on the table. You even got Russia as big boys on the table. You got big boys on the table. Now, England has got a baby seat. And the only way England can be a big boy on the table if they came to the table collectively with Europe. So when you, so when you're, so England now cannot go and negotiate big boy stuff when you're on a baby chair. So because England now is officially Before. separate from Europe, how do you go to the big boy table in a baby chair? Wow. And so we have to be the same way as well. If we're, oh. going, onto the, if we're going onto the world stage, how do we go onto the world stage? Like, okay, there's a table there. There is. What, there's what, a chair what does table. our chair look like? What does our chair look like? Are we going on there on a the baby chair? Because if we're going on the baby chair, we don't have no talk. From a, from a cultural perspective, but also from um, a business perspective, as a culture, as a community. Teach. So as a community, let's say you step onto the, 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 um, the, the, the tables of other communities. Let's say the Jewish community. We sit on the table and they sit on the table. Okay, someone said booster seat, I like that. Right, we sit on the table and they sit on the table, right? So we're both sitting on the table. What is the conversation? Wow. Do you understand what I'm saying? What's the conversation? So. You know, like, once again... You're on to something, brother. To me, um, and how we need to get onto that table, because I'm not just talking about things. I've got solutions as well. Yes, the sir. The solution is, first and foremost, we need to identify um, our frequency. It's got to start with frequency first. Believe it or not, it's got to start with frequency first. So we've got to start with frequency. We've got to find happy people, progressive people, first. We can't just bring people in because of their skill. Now, we know what a cancer does, right? What does a cancer do? A cancer metastasizes into the body and affects the whole body. If you have a cancerous person in your workplace, they metastasize throughout your workplace and everyone becomes negative. So we can't just simply turn around and say, right, everybody, we're looking for some skills. Who can do marketing? Who's an accountant? Because that accountant is negative. Forget it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's, it's not about the skills, it's about the character of the person. As a community, what frequencies need to come in? Then we can identify the skills and the abilities, and then we need to identify the action takers from the negotiators, from the closers, from, and so on and so forth. Basically build our cabinet, just like governments build their cabinet. Absolutely, brother. And then, and then all of a sudden, we can start to work out Okay, what is our GDP? What is our this? What is our that? And all the rest of the gross domestic products as a community and so on and so forth. And then we can step into the world and look at our USP as well, unique selling points. Then we can step onto the world stage and say, do you know what? Let's have a conversation now because we're united. We have a system in place. No one ain't crabbing a barrel kind of mentality. We focus on small stuff. Yeah. So on and so forth. We've got businesses backing us. Money's running through the community this way. We're organizing it in this kind of way. Now let's have a conversation. Do you want to talk about four billion to start with? Six billion to start with? One point two billion to start with? And and once again, that's it's more money for people. Have straight away, it's like once they you can get credited. So you've got the G seven back. Oh, I'm going too much. Let me slow down. Anyway, <laughs> we'll talk about that next week or something because I can go on to like G seven banks and G eight banks and how we can build our G G seven banks and all of that. But we'll go to that another time. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going... I know, brother, 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 what you're saying, I'm learning from you. I'm being educated and reawoken, brother, because 
our mindset in the community that we've been told to think is just very small, in other words. We think very small in the community. We think about, yeah, I want to be a millionaire. A millionaire is nothing now. That's, that's facts. You know, we want an award. We want to be the best actor, the best singer, the best. My mission in life is not to be an actor. I'm that already. I want to be more than that. I want cinemas. I want chains. I want, I want to tell a new story. I want to have a new education for young people out there. Black, definitely, and white, and every person out here. I want, I, bruv, I think beyond. I think way, we, we got to stretch our mind broader, people, for 2021. Go beyond. So if you're saying, yeah, I'm doing 50, because I do about 100 push-ups a day. That's what I, 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 that's, some, I, that's my thing. I'm saying, no, I'm going to go beyond. Let us go beyond people listening to this podcast right now, which our special friend and guest, Kevin Bennett, is giving us so much nuggets. Let's go beyond ourselves this year. Don't, we're sitting ducks right now, a lot of people. Oh, we're just waiting for the government. Oh, what are we going to do? Lockdown, lock off, tier four, three, two, one, none. Go to school, don't go to school. Let's not be led, let's be leaders today. 100%. We, we got to agree as a people because we're Jamaican, we're St. Lucian, we're Trinidadian, we're Bayesian, we're Nigerian, Ghanaian, South African. We have all one thing in common, and let's find that common denominator. Be us Muslim, Christian, Jew, atheist, agnostic. Rasta, it doesn't matter. Put away those labels. We have to be like the alcoholic and be wise like the alcoholic that says, boy, Guinness, they don't discriminate between Guinness or Dragon Stout or <laughs> Special K or whatever's out there. They want the alcohol. Yeah? They don't business with Benson and Edges, Silk Cup, Super King. They want the cigarette. They want the nicotine. We have to be like that and stop looking at these little small things. Oh, you're from South. You're from Brixton, you're from Nam, Dulwich, Hackney, North, Manchester, Liverpool, Scotland, Luton, Bedford, wherever. We got to come as one people for one common theme and stop the bickering and divide and rule. Oh, I want vaccines. I don't want vaccines. We all want the same thing, which is health. Some people want the vaccine, which I personally don't agree. Some people don't. But do we want longevity? Yes. So let's just come together on that premise. And put away these little bickering things. Yeah, you know, because there's people who, I'm going to say it. Some people are into stuff that I'm not into. Some people may be into going to certain kind of lifestyles. I'm not into it. But we can all come together and agree, do we want longevity? Do we want uh, uh, what is called intergenerational wealth? Enough man them around me are like, cool, so I'm never going to get married. I'm not into the marriage too. Why well, it's a trap. I understand what marriage is. That's why I'm into it. Marriage is about intergenerational wealth, creating dynasties. We can't just talk about Egypt and we're not creating our dynasty here. That's why I don't, bruv, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not into the consciousness when I see it in, in the community because it's always talking. It's all talking about what happened, what we did in the past. Yeah, wasn't we great then? I'm not interested. Just, I, want know, you know, just, today, I know you just said something, right? I want to be Man Samusa today. I'm not interested in studying Man Samusa if I, I can't do it. Do you know what you said, which is so true, right? And we need to learn to get married and stuff like that, right? Yes! It's yes, so sir. important. And, and do you know most of my memories are with girls that should have never had those memories with me? Oh, wow. You're gone there. You've gone there now. With, I understand what you're saying. I understand. Women that I knew I didn't have a future with. Now, every time they look at um, those wedding pictures, that person shouldn't be there. I've gone parts of the world with women I, I, I knew I didn't have a future with. And every time I think about that place and that part of the world and that memory, the person that's connected to it was never designed to be there. And so there's nothing greater than being with your true partner and your that's family. Right. And having memories, and when you close your eyes and you remember those memories, they Come are on. always connected to it. Not some girl that you knew you were just linking, and she, now she's a part of that memory. So you remember the great thing, but she's the she's the the trauma in the memory. She's a random, or he or she is a random from Hinge or Tinder. <laughs> well, there you go, there you go, there you go. You know, and so for me, I am not going to travel with anyone relationship-wise anymore unless Did she is. A part of the future. Non-negotiable. Non-negotiables. Yes. People, yes. non-negotiable. 
Don't negotiate your life away like that. There's got to be a non... Belief in God is non-negotiable for me. It's non-negotiable. I'm not... not Religion is something else. Exactly. But spiritual connection with Most High, non-negotiable for me. That's, That's me. Then. I can't impose that upon anyone else. Do you, know, do you know, even in law, they've got it in law as well. Actually, law? that's actually in law as well. Wow. So in law, you've got God's law, which is actual law itself. So how they see it, this is how they do it in law. You've got God's law, then God made man, then man made, then man made man's law. So God's law is thou shalt not kill. That's law. Come thou, on. thou shalt not cause harm. That's actual law. Come when on. you start moving away from God's law, you go into acts and statutes, but that's not God's law. Teach. We're going to go into that next week. I've been telling people. So in every world, is God law. comes first. Yeah. God I, I tell people this. In every world. Yeah. Law, said, God's law. Yeah. Yes, I love it. Yes, We're going to go there God's next God. week, bro. We're going to go there. Because I want to say, people, you've got to tune in next week, though. You know, by God's grace. If, you know, we, we, we were blessed to have Kevin this weekend, man. And, oh, man. We're so blessed to have you, brother. This is how we start the year. This, and I want to pick up Barbara, who's up on the live right now. She runs our own travel agency business. Our own business, people. Please follow Barbara. That's Barb Chan 3019. She has a link and connections with hotels, luxurious hotels. Yeah, we've got to raise our standards, people. When we're going back to Africa, the Caribbean, or wherever, go and speak to Barb Shan 3019. She will hook you up, man. Especially people who want to do conferences, businesses, hospitality. I know hospitality is going for a lot of stuff right now, but it will come back and we've got to be ready. We've got to use this time of lockdown to prepare. Don't get locked down with the lockdown. Use this time to exercise mind, body, and soul, man. So when lockdown get locked up, you're ready. A lot of people are not going to be ready. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. You no, got I'm, saying, I'm okay. I'm studying non-stop at the moment. Come on. I don't have no time. I study. Hey, I'm not hey. playing, man. I don't make a day pass without me learning something new. These are my book. How to I do anything. Badman book. <laughs> and this is not a book for the faint hide, you know? Badman book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's powerful. It's not for the best. Anyway, you you can use it. type person to, to go for that book because that book will break you if you're not careful. you got to be careful, people. This book... It, uh, no, let me not show that book no more. Let me just hide that book. People ain't ready. And another book, people, Basic Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and a re, uh, another version by Dennis Kimbrough. Get these yeah, books, yeah, man. You can even get these on um, Kindle. Look at all them books there. Readers are leaders, people. Yeah. What, we can't read one page, two days, pages a day? Exactly. I, I make it my duty to read, to watch, to study, bro. Like yourself. Look at this. This is a study. School's in. I've been taught today. Yeah, I love it, man. man. I love it. I love it, man. And um, Kevin, I know you've got many superheroes. You're the Black Panther yourself, bro. I know you've got to put on the Black Panther suit and save more people to build up the Wakanda, bro. I know you've got to do your thing, bro. So I know <laughs> you've given us all the vibranium today to start our 2021 which one means W-O-N-E with one. You've given us the frequency. That's why they call it vibranium, by the way, in Black Panther, because it's talking about frequency, higher levels. You've given us things that we shouldn't be, there should be non-negotiables. We have to look at our feelings, get our life boards, uh, find out where we are. You've told us about the things to get rid of, guilt, being ashamed, fear, worry doesn't, things that we worry about does not exist. Uh, you, you've spoken about keeping it simple, rich people keeping it simple, See, the seeking system, enthusiasm, being engaged, being interested, or being interested in people, not just being interested. Beautiful, brother. You've given me so much said it better than me. I've been wrong. wrong four times in a row. Huh? <laughs> you got it correct. I got it wrong four times in a row. <laughs> I'm a student right now, brother. And brother, please, can we have you next week? Please, my brother. Please, let's go deep next week. I love you, man. I love what you do. I've been watching you, brother. Me. We don't care about that. Any, bro, we don't even entertain no negativity. We're just positive. 
you know? And I love what you do, brother. Please, people, follow this guy. Follow him on his and, uh, social medias. Watch this back. We're saving this live. And it's, been, it's on YouTube. We're going to get this on YouTube so that people can watch it back, man. School is in. Kevin, love, man. I'm going to holler at you. Let's get you for part two, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Love what kind of forever? Let's do it, man. Let's do it. We'll go deep next week, yeah? Peace. Thank you. Love. That was Kevin Bennett, people. Kevin Bennett, people follow him on the Instagram live. Don't go anywhere yet. Don't go anywhere. Follow, like, subscribe to this channel and go on to our Black Film Institute. We've got more interviews on there. Go on our Black Film Institute YouTube. We need to get at least 1,000 subscribers, people. I'm asking you, please. 1,000 people subscribing to Black Film Institute YouTube because we want to do big things, great things. 